praise and worship service on behalf of the Kenya Christian Fellowship Triangle Chapter. We all have a great welcome. And thank you for choosing to be with us. Uh, thank you for choosing to worship God with us. You who is sitting there who is feeling the touch of God. You who is sitting there, maybe you're grieving the loss of a loved one. Maybe you just gave birth. Maybe you are going through a uh, quarantine. Whatever is happening in your life today, we have a reason to praise God in the midst of everything. We give glory to God. It's been a challenging pandemic year, but we thank God because we are here. Those that have breath, let us praise the name of the Lord. We are here to give a praise offering and worship to our God for what He has done. For everything, for whichever circumstance that we are going through, we thank God. It's been an amazing year, yes? We have been challenges, but the Lord has taken us through. We are rejoicing to, today to know that He is our Ebenezer. Worthy to be praised. And therefore, join us. Offer your praise and worship wherever you are, whether you are driving, working, cooking, whatever you are doing. We just want to thank you for joining us. This is our worship service. It's, we are not entertaining. We're just giving praise and honor to God because He deserves it. We are just about to celebrate Christmas, and soon we'll be crossing over a new year. When we look back, the Lord has been so good, so faithful in all circumstances. So join us as we give Him, as we, as we tell Him thank you for what He has done. Again, on behalf of the Kenya Christian Fellowship in America, Triago Chapter here in North Carolina, we are so happy to bring to you this live worship service in honor of the Most High God. Welcome, and I'm going to invite my sister to lead us in a word of prayer. Let's bow our hands and pray. Our Father and our God, this afternoon we come before you with thanksgiving and praises in our hearts. Lord, we want to thank you because unto us, Jehovah God, a child is born, and unto us, a son is given. We celebrate, my Father, my God, the birth of your Son, dear Lord, because indeed, Jehovah God, we have seen of what he came to do. He has done it for us, O oh Jehovah God, and that's why, Lord, we have taken this time to come together and celebrate you, worship you, and magnify your holy name, declaring that you are the God of all creation, declaring that you are the King of kings, declaring that you are the Yahweh, Jehovah God, the beginning the end and the end from the beginning. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because as we pause in our lives, dear Lord, and we 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. We thank you for the sweet aroma, Lord, in the Lord on this altar. We thank you, everlasting God, Holy One of Israel. And even, O oh God, as we have come to celebrate your birth, we say you are our Savior. We say you are our healer. We say we love you and we bless you. We worship you and we praise you. Even Lord, as I minister your holy word, I ask for your blessing. I humble myself before you. I commit my heart and my spirit before you. And ask that, O oh God, you use me as a vessel of clay to the glory of your holy name. Therefore, God, this meeting has been unto your name, and it shall continue to be unto your name. We thank you and we praise you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. Amen, amen. Wherever you are, you can give Jesus a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Whether you are here in the sanctuary, whether you are at home, whether you are driving, give the Lord Jesus Christ a mighty hand clap. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. I thank God uh, uh, for this gathering and uh, even as uh, we have come just to have what you call Christmas carols, uh, one thing we know is that he is faithful. And the Bible says, in season and out of season, hallelujah, we be prepared to serve him. We be prepared to worship him. We be prepared to glorify him. Hallelujah. Amen. So my names are uh, Reverend George Karioki. By the grace and mercies of God, I am his servant. And I thank God uh, for the invitation uh, to come and speak uh, during this uh, 2020 uh, Christmas uh, cards. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank God, my Savior. Also, I thank uh, uh, the leadership of uh, KCFA Triangle, even as uh, you have invited me. And uh, I don't take it lightly. And the one thing I know is that God is with us. Amen. Also, I want to say, I want to uh, express my appreciation of, uh, to my family. That is the Reverend uh, Willie Karaoke and my two girls, that is uh, Judith Karaoke and Jessica Karaoke, for their continued support even in the ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, the message today that I will be bringing is he stepped into time and space. He stepped into time and space. Amen. And the uh, one thing we know is that the God whom we serve, the God whom we love, He is a living God. Our God is not like other gods. Our God is eternal. Our God is powerful. Our God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yet, when time came due, at the opportune time, God deliberately and through his love and through his power stepped into time and also into our space. And thus I find that the Bible says that God, the Son, that is Jesus Christ, took a body, a human body, and stepped into his own creation through the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how we say that he is Emmanuel, God with, uh, God with us. And of course, the coming of Emmanuel was fully predicted and announced by the prophets through the power of the Holy Spirit of a period of 1,500 years. So even before he came, there had already been prophesied that God shall take the form of a human being. Indeed, shall step into time and space. This is a mystery. Hallelujah. This is a mystery that God took a human body. 
the omnipotent God, the maker of the heavens and the earth, the ancient of days, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, took the human body and stepped into time and space. The one who said, let there be, stepped into time and space. The firstborn of all creation stepped into time and space. Hallelujah. Amen. The one who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, stepped into time and space. And one thing we know is that human beings have tried to imitate God. They have tried to create things. They have tried. Not that I undermine the work of scientists, no, I really appreciate. But they have not been able to match what God did from the very beginning. And much more, they cannot match what Christ Jesus did when he stepped into time and space. Hallelujah. Amen. About two years ago, I translated a documentary that was originally made in Swahili and Kikuyu into English. And this documentary was about the last male North and White Rhino. That was the last one in the world. And uh, through watching and also through the compiling and the translation of that documentary, it's called Kifaru, I was not able indeed to understand how human beings are weak. We will try, we try our level best, but we cannot match what God has done. And that's why I am glad that even today, in the midst of all that is going on, in the midst of the COVID, we are able to come and praise Him and worship Him who stepped into time and space. Hallelujah. He came from heaven to earth so that he can be born. He stepped from heaven to earth so that we can be redeemed. And so we can see what God can able to do through the power of the Holy Spirit. And our text today is coming from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 26 to that 8. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 to 38. The Bible says, and I'm reading uh, from the New American Standard Bible. The Bible says, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David. And the body's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and was pondering what kind of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and give birth to a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the promise of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will have no end. But Mary said to her, uh, excuse me, but Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. For that reason, also the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative 
Elizabeth herself has conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called infertile is now in her sixth month, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the Lord's one servant, may it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. And what do we say? Thanks be to God. This is the word of the Lord. The people respond and say what? Amen. Amen. Oh, thanks be to God. Glory be to God. So this is how Jesus Christ took a human body and stepped into time and space through the power of the Holy Spirit. His conception was a miracle because number one, Mary was a body. Number two, it was difficult for somebody who had not, you know, for a lady who had not been married, in a sense, to become pregnant. So in a sense, this was a miracle itself. And so we can see what God did and has continued to do. And I believe, and we have seen this, that God is able to do even mighty things when we allow him to step into our time and also into our space. Hallelujah. Amen. Especially when we do not spiritually distance him. When we allow him to come into our lives, into our families, he brings changes, he brings profound things, he brings positive things to and for his glory. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And you can see a few things here. Verse 28, where we read, the angel came and told Mary, greetings, favor one. Greetings, favor one. So point number one is that when we allow God to continue to be in our lives, when we don't spiritually distance him, he brings favor. Hallelujah. Amen? That is number one. He brings favor. Number two, he changes the status quo. He changes the status quo. Verse 29, Mary wondered what type of greeting was this. It was not a normal greeting. And we know different cultures have different ways of greeting each other. If you come from East Africa, there is Habari or there is Jambo. Or if you grew up in Nairobi, like I did, we used to say Sasa. Mambo. Mambo po. Amanyaje. But when the angel of the Lord came to Mary, it was not a normal greeting. Hallelujah. That's why Mary was perplexed. Because it was not a normal meeting. Um, so it was not a normal greeting. And that's what she was wondering. How comes I'm being greeted this way? So when God comes, when we allow him to step into our time and space, when we don't spiritually distance him, he changes the status quo. And he comes and greets us in a spiritual way to the glory of his holy name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Can somebody say amen at home? Hallelujah. Amen. Also, we're able to see that when 
we allow him to step into our time and also into our space is that he brings calmness. He brings peace that passes human understanding. Verse 30, where we read, the Bible says that Mary was perplexed and troubled. Perplexed and troubled. The Swahili Bible says, Akafadaika kwa ajili yake. Akawaza moyoni salamu hii ni namna gani? That's a Swahili translation. But because Christ was able, or the angel of the Lord was able to speak how it shall come to pass, you find that Mary indeed finally said, let it be unto me according to your word. Hallelujah. So in a sense, God is able to bring calmness, to live in the midst of all that is going on. Because we shall allow him, and even we shall continue to allow him to step into our time and space. And I know this year, the year 2020, has been a very difficult year. Very difficult year. And I remember a time like this uh, last year, uh, we traveled uh, with Pastor Zach and uh, uh, Sister Ruth uh, to Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, to Reverend Teresia, where he was meeting. And uh, during that meeting, that was a prophetic uh, meeting towards the end of the year. She normally has those meetings. I don't know if she has this year. But in that meeting, a prophecy came. And when that prophecy came, at one point we don't understand because it, when the prophecy came for 2020 was that 2020 shall be a year that is filled with confusion and with chaos. We did not fully understand. We did not fully understand what is going on or what will happen. No idea about chaos, confusion, and all that. We do not really comprehend. Then come January. We started hearing stories about COVID. We started hearing other things that are happening. Then the planes became grounded. Then everything changed, the world changed. It was chaotic. Then came the elections. Then came the protests. Indeed, the year 2020 was a year. It's about to end. How many days to go? About 10 days. About 11 days about to go. It has been a year that is filled with many things. But we thank God because when we allow Him to step into our time and space, He shall continue to give us calmness. He shall continue to give us peace in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And even as I stand here, I prophesy calmness in Jesus' name. I prophesy peace in Jesus' name. I prophesy uh, prosperity in the name of Jesus Christ. In this city, hallelujah, in the city of Raleigh, in the triangle, in our homes, in North Carolina, even in the United States of America, I prophesy calmness in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because Emmanuel is with us. Emmanuel is with us. Glory be to God. So something else also is that when he steps into a time of space, he pays debts. He pays debts. And that's the reason for Christmas. That's the reason for Christmas. Christ's mission was to come and pay my debt. Was to come and redeem me was to come and pay a debt that he did not owe. Was to come and
and restore me back to God, was to come and help me restore me back to the original plan. That's why he stepped from heaven to earth and stepped into my time and space so that I can be restored back to God. Hallelujah. And therefore, even as we are looking forward to celebrate Christmas, let us remember, indeed, the very essence of Christmas is not that we incarnate. In the past, people have spent over thousand dollars over the Christmas season over the holidays. This year, I've been researching, I saw that it has a bit dropped to around eight hundred dollars. If you can spend, that is fine. But if you cannot spend, please don't push yourself. Because Jesus Christ, the one who stepped into our time and space, he is the reason for the season. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. He paid a debt. His perfect life made a perfect sacrifice for me. And so how do we reciprocate? How do we pay back to God? How do we pay back to him who has stepped into our time and space? Because when he steps into our time and space, he brings a change, he brings peace. And even when we look back, our lives before Christ and even now, we can see in him, he has done great things to the glory of his holy name. So how do we reciprocate? How do we pay back? What shall we render to Emmanuel? What shall we render to Jehovah? The one who stepped into time and space. Number one, as I finish, is we have Christ's attitude. Can somebody say amen? amen. Having Christ's attitude. The book of Philippians, the book at your time says, having this attitude in yourself, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a born servant and being born in the likeness of man. Be born in the likeness of man. That is Christ's attitude. Hallelujah. Amen. Of humility. Glory be to God. Number two is for us to be peacemakers. To be peacemakers. Peace be upon us. Peace be upon our families. Peace be upon this nation. And number three is we praise Him. Hallelujah. We praise Him. We worship Him. We glorify Him. My love for him will cost me. My love for him will cost me to respect and adore him. And therefore, I will not be silent. Hallelujah. I will speak, I will worship. Otherwise, the storms will praise me on my behalf. But I will not allow that. Can somebody say amen? amen. And it's for this reason that the angels sang. That's why while the shepherds watched their flocks by night, the angel of the Lord came. Now I'm fast forwarding nine months later. The Holy Spirit came, or the angel of the Lord came and spoke to Mary about her conception. Now I'm for fast forwarding nine months later. In the book of Luke chapter 2, the Bible says, Luke chapter 2, that while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the same region, there were some shepherds taking, staying out in the fields 
and keeping watch over their flock at night. And the angel of the Lord suddenly stood near them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And so the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. And for, to, for today, in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior, who is Christ to the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly armies. The King James says, a host of angels praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and all peace among people with whom he is pleased. When the angels had departed from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem. Hallelujah. Let us go straight to praise and worship. Let us go straight and glorify him. Then, and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. Glory be to God. This thing that the Lord has made known to us. Glory be to God. Therefore, what has the Lord made known to us is that he has stepped into our time and space. And therefore, we shall continue worshiping him. We shall continue glorifying him. And we shall continue to lift him up in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So even as we continue to socially distance, praise and worship, even as we continue to socially distance, let us not spiritually distance ourselves from God because he stepped into time and space. Hallelujah. He stepped into our time and space. And therefore we thank God and we glorify him. And if you are there and you have not given your life to Christ Jesus, I invite you to come and receive Christ Jesus, wherever you are. Because that's the reason why Christ came. And I promise you, by the word of God, is that when you allow him to step into a time and space, despite all that is going on, despite all the chaos, he will bring a change. You will obtain favor like Mary obtained favor. He will bring calmness into your life in the name of Jesus Christ. And so if you are there, I invite you to receive Christ Jesus even during this season so that you can be born again in the name of Jesus. If you are there and you want to receive Christ Jesus, I will lead you to this prayer so that when as we worship him, as we celebrate his birth, we shall be, you shall be able even to praise him with a great understanding. Hallelujah. If you are there and you want to give Christ Jesus your life, repeat this prayer after me and say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. Forgive my sins. I allow you to step into my time and space. You are Emmanuel. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my transgressions. And transform me so that I can be able to obtain your favor. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me. I'm now your child. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have given your life to Christ Jesus, please don't hesitate to reach out to us and we shall help you walk in this walk of salvation. Just like us, other people help us to walk in this walk of salvation. Therefore, 
a blessed Christmas, a powerful Christmas, and let's continue to allow Christ to be in our time and space. God bless you. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, we thank God for that powerful word. Hallelujah. Yes, and we glorify the name of the Lord. And as such, we are going to tell you, him who entered into time and space, that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the lily of the valley. He is the bright and morning star. He is the fairest of 10,000. To us and unto you, and to each and every one of us, wherever we are. Amen. Oshone Jesu, Norothi wa Juna. Newe tetele ya kiwa hii, newe hiwa ya kitu waba, akirete ya lata kirikumi. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We are waiting. Yes. Are you in a technical event?
Amen, amen. The next song that I'm going to, to sing, yeah, in Aitwa, the Tainua Kinanda Sam.
are now coming to the end of the year, we can only say of the Lord, we thank you for the things that you have done because his promises are yes and amen. 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 Anything else can, and anyone can fail you, but God will never fail us. My name is Mar